Today we're going to walk through uh, deploying Kribble Stream and Redis within Docker uh, quickly and showing a quick use case on how we can use Redis uh, as a form of enrichment within Stream. Now, to start, let's talk about why Redis uh, and why it can be very useful for you. So with Stream, the worker nodes are a share nothing architecture. So no worker node knows about really the other worker node. Now, if you need to perhaps maintain a large data set that all the worker nodes need access to, whether it's for enrichment, um, threat intel, uh, routing decisioning based on contents of an event, um, or if you need to maintain and update a data set based on what's flowing through a stream. Uh, Redis can be very useful um, as a way to achieve that. Uh, and it's actually really easy to use. So that's why we're gonna walk through that today and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, let's go ahead and create our uh, Kribble containers. You can see here, I've got a Docker Compose file. This can be found on our website, on our docs. I've added a couple things. Um, one being I've defined a network within Docker to be created called RedisNet. I've made sure that my worker and leader nodes are going to be attached to that network. Uh, now this is important because I'm going to, outside of this Docker Compose file, create the Redis container. So these need to, these worker, uh, worker node and leader nodes need to be able to talk to the, the Redis container. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, created the network, created the containers. You can see them over here. Great. Uh, I'm normally, stream would be running on port 9000. Uh, you can see in the compost file that we're just redirecting this to port 19,000. Okay, so now that those are up, let's work on getting our um, Redis container going. So I'm just gonna copy this command. There we go, okay. So uh, just to point out a couple things in this, uh, I'm making sure to attach this container to that Redis net network that I created, uh, giving it a pretty simple name using the, the Redis image. Okay, so that is up and running, great. And uh, what we're gonna do is uh, just log into it and double check that it is up and it is empty. So, okay. Um, and the example we're gonna we're gonna show today is just a list of Tor nodes that I have over here, and um, we're gonna load up a a set within Redis with all these IPs. And then within stream, we are going to, I have a, a sample file with, that may or may not contain some of these IPs and we're just gonna run a Redis function uh, to check to see if the IPs and logs are a known Tor node. Uh, so just to show that this set named Tor list is empty, I'm gonna run a quick command, set is members our set is a member. Actually, I'm gonna run set members. Okay, and it's an empty array, which is what we expect, we just created it. Okay, so next thing is to do is to do kind of a uh, bulk import of existing data, which you know I, is a fairly common uh, use case, you want to create Redis, you already have a set of data you want to start with. Uh, so in that case, you need to do a bulk import. Uh, and we can use uh, cat and Docker command combine to, to get this to achieve this. So let me just copy and paste this. In. So print out this, uh, this Tor nodes text file I have here, and pipe it over to um, the Redis uh, CLI command within the Redis container. 
Okay, and this is what we expect, no errors, and it received all entries that we expected. And again, we can open that back up, run a quick command just to double check that data actually does exist there. So I can run that same command, set members, tour list, and we'll get that 8,948 items that we expected. And uh, the command that we'll be using within stream is set is member. Uh, we got to call that set name tour list and then give it an, an entry. So let's just use that bottom one for an example, 95.217.62.4. And if it exists in that set, we'll get a one. If it doesn't, I'll just say 10, zero, 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 we'll get a zero. So that's going to be the basis of, uh, you know, whether or not a certain IP we want to check is a known Tor node. Okay. So now that we've got our stream containers running and our Redis container running, and we've got our initial data imported into Redis, let's go ahead and go to stream. Okay. So we're on our leader node now. Our worker group, our worker has checked in which is great. I've already created a, uh, a test Redis pipeline, which we'll walk through. Go ahead and load that up. And then on the right here, I've got a simple uh, standard Palo Alto traffic uh, syslog sample, uh, just a few events. And um, what we're gonna do is walk through some of these functions on the left. So to begin, we are we want to pull out the source and destination IP because that's what we're going to use. That's what we're going to pass to the Redis function uh, to check to see if these IPs actually are known Tor nodes or not. Okay. Then what we're doing is running our Redis function, uh, giving it a filter of uh, to check to see whether or not that source IP uh, is a private within the private IP space or not. Uh, if it is within the private IP space, you know, we probably don't need to hit Redis uh, and, and run, a, run a check there. But in this case, okay, not a private IP. Uh, put the result in the source tour field. Run that set is member command I showed earlier uh, within the set tour list using, uh, you know, the value of source IP. Here we've got the URL to connect to Redis. Uh, and in this case, we're not using any authentication. Likewise for destination, exact same setup. You know, is that destination IP a private IP? Uh, if it isn't, great. Let's let's check to make sure it's not in that list using the same kind of logic as earlier. Now, if I come over here to my sample and I click the out tab, we can see that I have extracted out the destination and source IP. And down here, you can see for source IP, it's in, within the private IP space, so we haven't bothered to uh, go hit Redis. Uh, but in this case for destination IP, we have run the check against Redis and we do get a result of one. And we can kind of confirm that here. If I run that same command, set member, tour list, uh, 103.214.5.13. And I get a one. Now, if I scroll down, we'll see a couple more examples. Uh, in this case, you know, internal to internal, no checks needed. A couple of those examples. Here's another example of the destination IP being a known Tor node. Uh, and here's an example where the destination IP is not a known Tor node. Now, this is just one use case. Um, you know, certainly there are there are many use cases where Redis can be extremely useful um, to help kind of maintain those large data sets or data sets that need to be updated based on data that's flowing through, um, you know, those separate worker nodes, uh, all while maintaining a, a common set of data that all worker nodes can hit um, and uh, kind of bypass that share nothing architecture uh, in, a, in an intelligent way. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a great day.
Thank you.